What is up everyone? JD here. Hope you're all doing well today. Got another big hand review for you. We're going to be talking about a budget knife and that is going to be the best tech slasher. What we're going to be doing today is going over the specs for this knife. We'll be going through some size comparisons so you get an idea just how big or small the knife is. Thickness profile, thoughts and impressions, and if I got them, alternative recommendations. But for budget knives, not going to be too much out there that I'm going to recommend outside of this knife, but I do have a couple. All right, let's go ahead and jump into specs. So first and foremost, the Best Tech Slasher has a 3-inch D2 steel blade, 4-inch handles with micarta scales, 7.125 inches in total length, and the claimed weight is 3.5 ounces. And let's go ahead and check the weight really quick. So right at three and a half, really glad to hear that. So what I'm gonna be doing next, again, going through size comparison. So I'm bringing knives out for you as a size reference. First, we'll bring the Demco AD 20.5 out here. Let's see. And as you can see there, it's just a little bit smaller than the Demco. And then we'll bring the Spyderco Shaman out here as the other size reference knife. And as you, as you can see, the Shaman is just a little bit bigger. So hopefully, if you're familiar with these knives, this is helping you a little bit for the size reference. Let's go ahead and get these two out of the way. And we'll go ahead and bring out the Benchmade Bug Out, which is another crossbar lock knife. We're going to get into that in just a minute. As you can see, the Slasher, close in size, but still a little bit smaller. And then we will bring the SIG K320 made by Hogue out here. And as you can see, just a little bit smaller of an EDC carry knife. So we'll go ahead and get these two out of the way. Oops, I almost picked up the best tech. <laughs> All right, last but not least, let's go ahead and bring out a pair of budget knives. First, my only three sub three inch blade, and that is going to be the Kubi Royal KU321. And as you can see, really close in size to the Best Tech, very comfortable because of that three inch blade length. And then we will bring out the Buck 110, and the Buck is just going to be bigger overall as well let's run through some quick thickness profiles so you can get an idea of the thickness this will help you understand how it's going to be in hand and in pocket as well as far as the thickness very comparable very comfor comparable to the royal i would say that is about dead even I'm trying to keep them thin there you go i would call that even we'll bring the demco out here as you can see the demco is going to be much thinner and then we will grab the bug out as you can see it is thinner than the bug out and just because i want you to see how thick it is here it is against the shaman just a touch more thickness over the shaman all right let's go ahead and jump into thoughts and impressions first we're going to talk about the ergos on this knife it has nice contouring to it and again, it is thicker, so since it is a smaller knife, it does fit into the hand surprisingly well. So again, I do have larger than large hands. <laughs> I would say extra large for sure, maybe even double XL. And I get about three and a half finger grips when I'm actually pushing as far as I can into that finger choil. Now, you can choke up a little bit because of the fact that the sharpening choil allows for a little bit more room and then you can comfortably spread all four fingers out but then neither finger are in that finger choil but this is what i would call like your power cut power push cut position which is really nice so the micarta on here is not the best micarta i've encountered this is very I don't know that the, it's a budget micarta, but it is a budget production. So it is smoother. It doesn't have as good a texturing as you find on like the Civivis and the Kaiser these days. It does have a very budgety deep carry pocket clip. All the chrome hardware definitely make this scream like it's a budget knife. Now, I will say the, the pivot collar does step it up a little bit because it does have like that kind of color reflection going on in there and it has some milling and machining to it that look really nice on both sides. And the T6 hardware here is really, really small, but also because it is so small, it does hide a little bit of that plain Jane, just 
satin finish that you see on there. You do have some relief cuts in the scales to try to help keep that weight down. Again, three and a half ounces on a three inch knife. It's a little bit heavy. Blade shape has that nice Warncliffe blade shape to it. I really like that a lot. Sorry, sheep's foot uh, blade shape to it. I really like that a lot. Has that curving going up into the blade and then it brings that tip down, which is great for utility cuts. It actually has a pretty decent stone wash. It is not the best that I've ever seen, but it's also not the worst. Um, the sharpening troil is a little bit questionable. It, it slides out pretty far, but then it's really straight. So you, it looks like you should be able to get quite a few sharpenings out of this D2 steel before you run into that plunge grind. Um, and I would say by the time you run into that plunge grind, you're going to have to have removed a lot of steel. Uh, not the thinnest geometry. It does feel okay. I wouldn't say it is the thinnest slicer out there, but I think it'll do the job, especially for an EDC. I do like the thumb studs. Those are really nice. They remind me of the bug out thumb studs and they work really well for deployment. So I do think they hit that one on the head. Really good job on the thumb studs. Now, pulling back to the access bar thud, uh, sorry, crossbar lock studs not the best these feel overly bull nosed they don't uh they're not raised up enough what i find with these is that they just uh, my fingers want to slip off of them i can't get enough grip there's not enough exposure there i think they need to be just a little bit taller and then it is quite i think because it is so small it does quite ha has quite a heavy detent to it very heavy spring action on it it does actuate and you can get to it fine but as you can see my index finger and my thumb from where i was holding it just now doing all of that fidgeting you really got to squeeze down on it to keep a grip on it it does you don't feel enough of the sharpness unless you get right in front of it instead of on top of it and if you deploy or recess the blade like that i don't think you'll have an issue here um, the pocket clip is in a weird spot. I, I like the fact that they wanted to go with the minimal hardware, but it just looks out of place. It doesn't always have to be in the center, but the reason I say something about it is because you really feel that because it's up so high. I think a little bit lower and it would have gone into the nested part of the hand. But the problem with that is it cocks the blade up so you're you know you're not in a true push push cut position whereas if you hold it to where it's more natural and comfortable you're in a push cut position so i thought that was a little strange um pocket clip is nice and strong it's springy but it goes right back into position this billing it does go up a little higher than it probably needs to but that does let it go in and out of the pocket with no issues they are protruding but the pocket clip bolts are actually low profile enough where this just does not catch when it goes all the way deep into all the way into the pocket deeply the backspacer is g10 i don't have any feelings on that either way and then again the um unfinished steel liners they just again i think they pull away a little bit um I'm not saying you have to code it because I think that would have drove the price up. And that brings me to the price of this. I think this is like a $60 knife if I remember correctly. And I'll throw it on the screen. But I don't know that this feels like a $60 knife. It's D2. I think if it had 14C28N or Nitro V, um, N690 even... Austin A, I think I would like it a little bit better. The reason I say that is because there's so many D2 steel knives out there. So you, again, I'll bring the Royal out here. Yes, it's not a crossbar lock knife, but it is a D2 steel blade that actually has a pretty good finish on it. Um, I don't know if this is bead blast or sand blast or glass blast, but I thought it was stone wash, but I actually think I prefer the stone wash on this D2. But I think the finish look is better on the Kubi. The pivot looks a little bit more premium on the Kubi. The hardware looks a little bit nicer because it's nice and nested in there and you get a T8. 
looks a little bit better on the QB. So, you know, if D2 is actually the steel you prefer because you like the edge retention, you're paying $60 for a knife that you could get for 30. Yes, I know Free Tiger is not as big a manufacturer as Best Tech, but you get a very well done D2 drop point you get nice thumb studs on there that are well ele elevated. You get the exact same style crossbar lock studs, but these actually protrude out more. You can actually get to them easier. This has really smooth action on bearings. It actually feels smoother out the box than the Best Tech did. And the Best Tech honestly is pretty smooth. Like I'm not knocking it, it feels smooth. But what I'm saying is, the actual free tiger feels just you see how it just drops like it bounces out it drops so well i probably need to loosen the pivot up a little bit here but really really nice it has almost the uh, and again this is a 32 dollar knife actually i think it's a 28 dollar knife i don't think it's gone up but doesn't that pocket clip look exactly the same it's like they got it from the same manufactured and imported it but the pocket clip position even though it's not centered is in a better spot here for the ergos so 28 dollars 60 dollars you see what i'm saying i'm thinking for the money you could have put it a more exciting steel on this 14c 28n nitro v really jump out to me and i know that that's on some like 70 dollar knives but 60 bucks i think you threw throw some nitro v on here I think you put a stone wash on it instead of letting it come out just plain Jane like this or maybe throw a coating on everything. I think this is going to be an outstanding knife. Um, it's recommendable. If you really like the looks and you think that micarta is a bit more of a premium material than say the G10 that I mentioned on the Free Tiger earlier for half the cost... You could do that. I would say you're probably going to have a better warranty experience through Best Tech than you are through Free Tiger, though. So just keep that in mind. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time closing that because that is really smooth action. Just keep that in mind also, too, when you when you think about the price. But, man, doesn't that pocket clip just look odd? Like, it just looks out of place. Like, they just kind of shoved it up to, <laughs> up to the top. And I know they did that so that the hardware... That stud goes into the to the backspacer. But I would have said, just put the one extra screw up in that corner and drop the pocket clip. I think it would have looked better. Minimal branding, not too bad. Um, I think the best tech, they could get rid of the emblem and just have best tech written here or take it off altogether because you got the B in the pivot. I think it would look better. Um, would I recommend this knife? No. I wouldn't, I, for the money you're spending on it, unless it's on sale, you're getting a discount. Again, I would say go get yourself um, a free Tiger. There's a ton of Gonzos and Civilians out there that have D2, and they're all for like 30 bucks. If you want a knife that has a crossbar lock that works really well, I think the free Tiger, in my opinion, is the best of those three brands that I mentioned. But again, I'm trying to save you some money. Granted, the majority of them, from what I have seen, come in g10 but i do believe sativian recently released one with micarta but i'm assuming it is the same type of micarta it's just very smooth when you get it in hand it looks good on the camera right when you get it in hand it has absolutely no texturing and you can fix that you can take a little bit of like thousand hundred grit sandpaper or whatever um and just rough it up ever so slightly i said a hundred grit <laughs> a thousand grit sandpaper or something you know along those lines um maybe even like 600 grit 800 grit somewhere in there and just rough it up and you could give it that texturing uh but i can tell you it doesn't it doesn't even feel as good as like the the texturing here on the qsp you see how that looks fuzzy you see here, you don't see that fuzziness, right? It just looks like it's dried out. This is very smooth. This has a little bit of that denim feel to it, like when you run your hands through some um, jeans. That's, that's what the difference is. 
So I would say this is a pass for me. They're close though. They're really, really close. And if you love the looks, it is built well, right? It is built well. I'm just saying if you're gonna spend money on a D2 blade with micarta handles, if you don't care about the crossbar lock, look at the penguin. Look at the parrot from QSP. Those have a little bit better micarta and they are D2 steel and they're again around 30, 40 bucks. So I think if they were selling this for 40 bucks, it would be a yes. But where I've seen it on Blade HQ, I think it's at close like 58, 59 bucks. It's closer to that $60 price point. That's too high. I think they've outpriced themselves. I think if they had 14C or Nitro V, which I now I'm repeating myself, I think the price at $60, $65 is a great buy. And if they could fix those crossbar lock thumb studs, I think they need to put, raise them up a little bit, put a little more texture on them, and then you're good to go. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, leave a like. If you're enjoying the content and you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you follow along. And don't forget to turn that notification bell on so you don't miss alerts when future videos drop. I hope all of you have a fantastic week, and until next time, peace.